Like I said in yesterday's video about that 78 Super Reverb, I've begun researching and getting all the materials together so I can do the amps under a thousand dollar video. And one of the amps that I knew I was going to need to address was the Fender Tone Master series. And when I get to that point in the large video on amps under a thousand dollars, I don't want to spend 10, 15 minutes talking about the Tone Masters. I wanted to record a video, a prequel to the main video that I can link in the description of that video. So if someone says, I want to know more, I can say, here's what I've got on that. And I wanted to talk about it, but I wanted to more than talk about it. I called my buddy who works at the local Fender dealer to see if I could either borrow one for a few days or if they had one in the store. And I could do that thing you see on YouTube where I go in with my camera and look all casual, but you know, it's all set up ahead of time and spend 30 minutes to an hour in one of the back rooms with a guitar and the Tone Master and play it for myself because I have not played one yet. Uh, I generally only see amps when they're in for repair. Uh, those amps came to market last August. They have two year warranties. So we're about a year and a half away from me seeing them, at which point I imagine I'll see a lot of them. But I did want to play one for you guys so I could have a more informed decision. Uh, that was not possible. And I also wanted to open one up if possible to show you how they're built, which is something that I could not find in any of the online videos except little bits and hints shown on Fender's channel, which I've got some screenshots from. So between some screenshots from Fender's videos and some images I found online, I'm going to talk about a certain, uh, talk about what I can talk about without speculation. And we'll talk about whether these are good amps, whether they're going to meet certain needs, and whether these are good purchases from the amount of information which I have at this moment. Yes, they are good amps. I'm not wholly convinced that they're going to hold the resale value or going to be a long-term proposition. Uh, the warranty is two years. During that two years, you're golden. I cannot say whether they sound like a real one because I have yet to play one. I'll send you to Ask Zach's video, which I'm linking below. He seems to think it's pretty, pretty much okay. And uh, the man knows his deluxe reverbs. So let's, let's assume that the sounds are fine. A caveat on that, the sounds that he thinks are fine are the new firmware update. The firmware update on the new ones takes away the bright cap modeling and the speaker emulation out is uh, the IR from a Neo Creamback rather than the previous IR, the previous firmware's IR, which was a Neo Jensen C12K. Now a note on that, the C12K is the most commonly used speaker in the Fender 65 reissue Deluxe Reverbs. It is also a terrible, terrible sounding speaker with a 65 Fender Deluxe Reissue. Every amp that's come in that's had that speaker, if I A, B it to another speaker, the owner wants to buy a different speaker. The C12K really brings out the worst of the reissue. And for those who think the reissue doesn't sound very good, the amp itself actually sounds quite nice. The C12K just boosts the mids, dumps the lows, dumps the highs, and it sounds kind of hard at all times. Uh, so they have done not just a, a lightweight Neo version of a terrible sounding speaker, they modeled the terrible sounding speaker. On the new firmware re revision, you get the modeling of the Neo Creamback and the new versions of uh, the Tone Master Deluxe are coming with the Neo Creamback. The Celestian Neo Creamback is a fantastic sounding speaker. So I'm glad that Fender got it right and you can change the firmware. I'm not sure if you can go back to the old firmware from the new, I, like I said, I don't have one. Uh, but with the newest firmware update, you can get a better sound. I don't know what other changes might be incorporated in that firmware update. Uh, Zach said that the overall amp sounded better to him after that. I'm going to trust him on that. One of the issues with this amp is that it is an odd digital amp in that it is self-limiting. It intentionally does not play well with others. Uh, it has two IR outs, or you can turn them off, and the IRs are a choice of just the two. You can't say, I want to try a uh, Celestion V30 or the Creamback or an old Oxford, et cetera, et cetera. Maybe future firmwares will do that. We'll find out as time goes by. It does not have an effects loop, which to me is a very strange choice for an amp that does all these things. And I understand why, because they wanted to be a self-contained. You buy this thing from Fender and it's all you should ever need. But what if you wanted to put delays or reverbs 
or other time-based effects in the effects loop. You can't. You've got to run it in front of the amp, which is not that great if you've got the preamp dialed up for higher gain stuff. Second of all, if I were looking to build a really good versatile rig in 2022, one of my choices might have been to get an HG stomp or the full helix. That's my core sound. And two of these uh, deluxe reverb tone masters, and I would run the out of my helix or HG stomp into the power amp ends, the effects returns of the two deluxes that gives me 40 watts stereo for large stages. And then for a quick fly date, I could just take the HG stomp or, or the Helix and use backline, or for a quick gig around town, I could just grab one of the two deluxe tone masters, throw it in the car and have enough sounds. I don't have to use the Helix. I don't have to have all my presets and, and, and all that stuff grab and go. I really do think that the effects loop would have made these a much more versatile, expandable rig. Speaking of that, this is the version one, which costs, you know, typically 750 new. I mean, the list is higher, but you can, you can get these things for about 750 new if, you, if, you, if you're patient, wait for someone to put them on sale. And it might last two years, the warranty. It might last five years, might last 10 years. More on that in a moment. But what happens if version two comes out and it does have an effects loop? Let's take all the possible IR updates or third-party IRs out of the equation and just say it's the same app, but it has an effects loop. Well, you're going to want the one with an effects loop. And so is everyone else, which means the value of the one you already owned just went through the tank. That's one of the problems with this. Uh, the strengths of this compared to other digital modeling apps is that the cabinet itself is very well built. It's the same pine cab they're using for the tube reissues, unlike the very cheap cabs you find in the Line 6 and uh, Boss stuff. It's a good-looking cabinet. It's got the same Tolex you find on the, you know, quote, real fenders. A Neo uh, Creamback is a fantastic sounding speaker. All the hardware is great. So it is a much better built amp as far as all that goes, including the chassis. The chassis is pretty much the same chassis they're using for the tube version only doesn't have the holes for the transformers or the tubes and has different locations to mount the components. Now let's talk about the components. What I'm looking at here is a picture that I found. and I, I believe this falls under fair use. If you are the taker of this photo, there was no credit uh, and you object to this, let me know and I'll, I'll see what I can do. But I think this is fair use educational because I'm not directly profiting from this. Trust me, I don't make a lot from an individual video like this. You've got an ICE module on the left. That is both the power supply for the amp and the output of the amp. And that is a third-party ICE module. It's one of the better ones available on the market. Should that die, and it's not all that uncommon for ICE modules to have problems, I could change that out for you. If, this amp, if you have one of these amps, it's out of warranty, and your ICE module dies, I can get another one, and I can install it for you, and so can a lot of techs. That's the good news. Looking at the preamp board, uh, well, not the preamp board, the POTS board, the POTS and jacks, that's pretty much, it looks to be pretty much just like this kind of stuff that you find on the 65 reissue. It looks like they're using standard POTS, not rotary encoders. Uh, standard jacks that they use on the 65 reissue series. Pretty much you take it off, you clean the pots, you may reflow some solder joints. Should one need to be replaced, you can get that part. So as far as the big electromechanicals go, the pots, the jacks, the pot on the back, those all seem to be pretty standard stuff that can be replaced. So the stuff that gets the most use, wear and tear, no problem. Power switch, the IC, that all looks just fine. The issue are the two remaining boards in here. On the lower right, you're going to have the bulk of the amp circuitry as far as the preamp goes and the output stuff with the, you know, the, the ins and outs. That is very proprietary. It's all surface mount. If it fails while the amp is in warranty, your Fender Authorized Service Center can change that out. The minute the amp is out of warranty, if that fails, you're going to be looking at three things. Is that part still available? Number one, and what it costs if so. And two, do they make it available to any tech or just Fender authorized service centers? I think as long as that board is available and Fender still sells that and has a stock of it, you'll be okay, though you may have to go to an authorized service center. So you may have to send your amp off to the next major city if that's the case. The big thing in the middle there though, that is the quad core CPU. It is essentially a fairly powerful laptop uh, CPU with memory and all that fun stuff, smack dab in the middle of your amp. 
Now, this entire amp is an amazing feat of computer engineering. My hat's off to them. If they've only got it 95% as good as a real one, that's a stunning achievement. And they're doing it with a lot of processing power. That said, it is literally processing power. It is a computer component. The people who, can, who are qualified to do component level repair on CPUs, none of us can afford to hire per hour because they're all under contract doing designs. This again is designed to be replaced. If it fails, the entire thing gets replaced. And again, how long will that be available? And how much will it cost to have done once it's out of warranty? These are the known unknowns. Time will tell. I would suggest that if you own one of these, you baby it. It's a, what, 25, 26 pound amp for the Deluxe Reverb. Treat it as if it were spun glass. Don't drop it like you do your iPhone. As rugged as that chassis is, there's not gonna be a lot of shock mounting for the, for the computer boards in here or the other uh, surface mount boards. Uh, the ICE module, again, they do fail, but they are fixable. The front panel stuff that's gonna take the daily wear, that's all replaceable. So this is in one way a very good design, but treat it like it's a laptop. Don't throw it in the back of your pickup truck. Take care of it and it will last longer. How long it will last if taken care of, I cannot say I do not have a crystal ball. If you really need an amp that does what these do and you like the sound, play one. See if it does it for you. Know that if you pay $750, you're not going to get $600 for it two years from now or $500 two years from now. You're going to, if you're lucky, get three to $400 for it. And that will go way down if there's a version two, which has new and improved features that everyone wants. It's also possible that they continue to support the version one with just changes to the firmware updates over time. Uh, you're not going to get an effects loop addition to a firmware upgrade, but you, you know, you could have more and more features. Maybe they do it so you can choose to have reverb and tremolo on both channels versus just one channel, et cetera, et cetera. Maybe they make something better and it's a free download. I hope so. It's a very promising approach, but be aware it does not have an effects loop. There's no way of knowing how long it will last. And uh, especially in a more modern, it's, you know, it's, it's aimed at traditionalists which is an odd thing to do in some ways with, with a, a digital modeling app. But for the, 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 the kids who don't care about tradition, who think I'm an old fogey because I even futz around with tube amps, I'm only 51, I'm 37, I'm not old. You know, for the kids today who, you know, those kids today with their hair and their clothes, but seriously, I mean, I, I see the comments. There are people who think tubes are crazy. Uh, people who use tubes are crazy. It's all gonna be IRs and, and plugins any day now. And to some degree, they're right, though I don't think I want a gig with a $2,500 and up MacBook Pro that can do all that stuff in real time. It doesn't have enough features for, the, for people who are hardcore into the modeling world. You know, you get an HG system, a Helix system, you're going to want something with effects loop so you can have that flexibility. And this is a place where the, the current version uh, lets you down. I look forward to playing one. And, you know, I would love to say in five years' time that I've had 10 of them on my bench. They were all rolled with minor things and they seem to be holding up. Time will tell. Now, before I close this video out, this is that uh, 78 Super Reverb, and I had a lovely talk with the owner. He bought this down in Clarksdale, Mississippi, a few years back for $600. He's authorized all the work. So after spending about $400, he's going to have a world-class amp that will last him for decades and sound fantastic. I'm about to order the parts so we can prove that to everyone once you hear this when it's done. So amps under a thousand, you're looking at one and the, uh, the digital stuff, that's another option. There are very different ways to get to wherever you need to be.